Esports is a truly global phenomenon, but that doesn't mean that every region is on equal footing. South Korea, China, Europe, and yes, even North America have become competitive across many games. Well, some more than others. Another page in the TSM chapter of disappointment. But among the regions that are expected to soak up all the silverware are those that are fighting just to be recognized. Formidable dark horses that have overcome incredible odds in spite of the challenges they've faced along the way. He's in range again! He's the Phoenix ahead! He's the Phoenix behind! Oh, he he's got it. it! It's over! Arslan's gonna get the tournament! Arslan, he's your Evo Japan champion! Sai goes down, but by getting skipped. Oriana picks up another kill. Sai, Sai Assassins are the season two world champions. Is it in? Has TNC done the impossible? Two-time major winners, you are gone! The Filipinos have eliminated RG! TNC have done it! But breaking into the top tier in any esport is never easy for a developing region. And even some of the world's most prestigious scenes have had their reputations dragged through the mud by players looking for shortcuts to the top. But in the world of Indian Counter-Strike, there is one event so infamous that it didn't just send shockwaves through the scene, it killed it. A despicable, heinous act that would not only create the region's greatest villain, but one of CSGO's most notorious memes. So how did Optic Gaming's Indian long shot end in disgrace? And what the hell does Microsoft Word have to do with any of this? I think he got the punishment he deserves from social media itself. I think being shunned and remembered as the person who destroyed Indian Counter-Strike Esports, it'll carry on regardless of where he goes. Okay, so first things first, Optic Gaming announced the formation of the Optic India roster in June of 2018. And for the Counter-Strike community there, it seemed like a big opportunity to show what the country could do. Optic India is a new beginning. Cracking India as a region would be huge for both Optic and Counter-Strike. The country has over four times as many people as the United States, living in an area one third the size. You're talking about perhaps one of the biggest potential untapped market, untapped market in esports. Why not get in right now when no one's there, right? Why not grow the brand? Sure, esports isn't that big right now, but if you're gonna be the first mover, you get the community beat on your side. So how did they decide who to pick up? Well, the team didn't just appear out of nowhere. The org actually held tryouts, and they claimed to have had over a thousand applicants. Yeah, so uh, if I remember it right, uh, I had like a long, uh, like written process where people had to just you know, write down stuff, and it was easy to like filter out a lot of people based on that. And then, of course, a lot of people came for the land tryouts. It was kind of like mixing people up, taking notes. The roster that emerged from the process was composed of Marzil. Antidote, Haivan, Formless, and Nikhil Forsaken Kumawat, a lurking support player who was introduced by Optic as someone trying to redeem his image. He was like the persona non grata of the scene. He rose to fame and success very quickly from being a nobody to somebody who was quite literally dominating most of the pro guys in the scene. That tarnished image was because most members of the Indian CS community were aware that Forsaken had had previous run-ins with Scandal in 2017. Uh, I remember he got banned temporarily by Isik when he had confessed to, uh, or rather he was caught, uh, selling Steam accounts, of which one of the accounts got back banned, if I'm not mistaken, which he had owned in the past. He claimed that he sold the account, but according to ESIC rules, it doesn't matter if you sold the account or not, because you're not supposed to actually sell an account. It's not legal per se. But the ban still held, and after that, he wrote multiple emails, or he claimed to write multiple emails, and he got the ban revoked to six months. Regardless of whether Forsaken story was true, he'd done well enough during trials to earn a spot on the roster. And in July, Optic rounded out their lineup by bringing in German import YB as the team's in-game leader. Buoyed by his acquisition, the team set their sights on qualifying for some big LAN events to prove that they could hang with Asia's best. 
And eventually, they did just that, earning a spot at Extremes Land Zowie Asia CSGO 2018 as their region's only representative. So we were just trying to make sure we do our best in the event so that they have some uh, reason to retain our roster to keep supporting it regardless of what happens, uh, or at least maybe make it to the quarterfinals, semifinals and everything. Optic India had dreamt of making history. And they did. Just, unfortunately, not in a way that anyone predicted. During Optic India's group stage match against Revolution, Marzil, who was sitting next to Forsaken, tried to call a pause for a technical issue with his monitor. So then I see an admin coming behind my PC, right? Because my PC is next to his PC. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. It's all good. Uh, I, have, I have my issue resolved. And then the admin was like, no, no, wait. And he went, goes to Forsaken's PC, right? And he minimizes the game. Now, as it happens, the admins had already discovered something out of place on Forsaken's SSD. So they took the opportunity to check the folder. So he goes to that folder and then he opens that file. And I distinctly remember around three words, which was have fun and hack or something on those lines, right? And I'm like, what the hell? And that's when it, uh, that, that's the part of the video where you see I'm looking like days, like what is going on? Forsaken tried to bat away the admin and delete the files, but was asked to step aside. That's when reality came crashing down on not only Marzil, but the rest of Optic India. And I'm just like perplexed. I'm like, wait, what? Is this actually happening? I, I, felt, I felt my hands go numb. I was like, is this actually happening? Am I in a dream? What is this going on? And... I, I had like a series of emotions run through me. I didn't know whether I should be angry, upset, sad. I, I had no control. Things moved quickly after that. The team was disqualified and Optic sent Forsaken home immediately. But the rest of the team had to wait for their return flights in a few days. Little did they know, outside the walls of their hotel, the clip had gone viral and the world of Counter-Strike was reacting to what had happened. No, I wasn't working that event. I was I was at home. I woke up and uh, my 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 phone my my alarm didn't ring because my phone had hung because of too many messages and notifications. It just blew up like my Twitter, my 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 WhatsApp, like mess. Everyone's like, dude, what the hell is going on, right? And a key detail that fans picked up on was the name that Forsaken had seemingly given his cheats, Word.exe. And similar to how VAC became a popular meme in the aftermath of the 2014 bans, word.exe became the stand-in term for describing someone's hacks. Listen to the fire crackling while we're sitting present rapping, filling up each stocking with good cheer. Cause everyone knows soon it's Christmas. It's become such a prevalent meme that if you search word.exe right now, nearly everything that pops up first is actually related to Forsaken and not Microsoft Word. When you look at the overall scope of things, yes, that kind of blew up, right? It became a very memeable thing. Everyone's talking about it. Honestly, for me, I wasn't too uh, perturbed with that fact. I was like, yeah, it's going to be funny for a while. People are going to be talking a bit about it, but it's not a bad thing overall. It's not going to lead to the, the death of the scene. In the aftermath, reporting from VP Esports pointed to multiple complaints from teammates that something may have been awry with Forsaken's aim. But in the end, it was the admins that exposed him. And having been slammed with a five-year ban by the ESIC after it was revealed that he had used an aimbot to cheat at previous tournaments, Forsaken pretty much disappeared from the face of the earth. He ruined a lot of things for a lot of people but uh, there's no way any of that is coming back. So there's no point in yelling at him. I think he got the punishment he deserves from social media itself. I think being shunned and remembered as the person who destroyed Indian Counter-Strike Esports, it'll carry on regardless of where he goes. And as fans combed through Forsaken clips in October of 2018, one thing became pretty clear. In hindsight, there were some very obvious clips. Like, Hilariously obvious. That's why. Oh, what? What? Forsaken and Antidote are gonna have to try and retake the site. Luckily, there is a hole in the smoke, so Forsaken's gonna get some nice positioning up on the site, and he's gonna be able to get rid of Fog to the two v two. Nicely done.
But while the world was joking around, the rest of Optic India were facing a hard reality. One in which they were unemployed and no longer had the support of their org. We thought that Optic would come out in support of us and then uh, let us know that they got our backs. And, you know, at least until the trip was over, until we got back home to Indian soil. But uh, all they said was, we're shutting down this division, goodbye. And there was no funding support also from that point it was cut. There was no money coming in to actually feed us food when we were in China for lunch and dinner. Worse still was the potential fallout. Optic were pretty much the biggest org to ever have taken a chance on the region. And now they'd withdrawn in disgrace. When we went and, and, and scouted in India for, and obviously it turned out a shit show because of that f***ing cheater, for, yeah. Forsaken or whatever his yeah, name yeah. is, f***ing loser, um, put, to put on that brand and to f***ing do that, like yeah. he is lucky. Like that, I wasn't f***ing there. Because I, mean, I know that we're we're in Indian rules are different there. Same thing if we were in Mexico, I'd approach them a, a different way in a yeah. situation like that, right? <laughs> but in spite of the shame that the scandal had brought upon the former members of Optic India, it didn't sour their love for Counter Strike. Marzal and his teammates went on to compete as part of Signify against South African squad Bravado at DreamHack Invitational Mumbai a couple of months later where they beat them in a 2-0 upset in the bracket and lost a narrow 2-1 grand final set, proving once and for all that they didn't need Forsaken's hacks to put up a fight. Maybe the Forsaken situation means that Counter-Strike won't be India's breakout esports opportunity, even if it does have a scene that players like Marzil hang on to tenaciously. But even still, with the country's big population increasingly interested in gaming and esports, it seems like keeping India off the stage forever is unlikely. Even if a scoundrel did write part of its story in word.exe. It's an incident that happened that left behind a lot of memes, uh, which honestly I won't lie, I found it pretty funny uh, even at that time. But it, it is what it is. It wasn't really gonna leave a long-term effect on the scene overall. Even if a scoundrel did write part of its story in word.exe. I just got it. Like, I just got the f***ing last line. Really? Yeah. I, that's why I was trying to change it yesterday, because I was like, it's so good. I just didn't get it. It's my bad. I don't know what... Maybe I was just tired yesterday, or like, I don't know what the f*** it was. It's so good. No, no, no. It's so good. Josh killed it. I don't know why the f I didn't. Yeah, I just, I, I think yesterday was just a weird day. Like it was so dreary and I was tired and I was just like not in it.